the land, you know, the way it was, where there wasn't, you know, each person having their own little allotment like that? Were there people who fought against that among the Kootenays? Something I didn't know. The grandparents never ever mentioned about that because when they came over and start to, they call it making checkers, meaning that they start up cutting the reservations. Some ones that get 80 acres, most of them, the good lands would be 80 acres. Second allottees, they give them just like 80, 120, and 160. I had 160. And Camille, Ken Mill, only had 120. And uh, because where we were put, it, was, it wasn't that you call wasteland, it was had timber on it, no. But the first allottees, they gave them the best, and that come out at 80 acres. And then I never did ever hear they have trouble over it. Even some of these other people that go to certain ones say, hey, there's an opening over there, and it's better land. Why don't you take that one? Oh, yeah, I didn't go around, I didn't see. You know, they helped one another where they thought and think that that was the best. Huh. You know, I never heard any anything like, you know, arguments or fight over lands or in my rights family, in any kind. No. In my family, like I said, I was born over in Little Bitterroot. All along that Little Bitterroot Creek, all meadow, and uh, the, a man they called Angus McDonald. They told my folks, pick out this whole meadow. He used to hold that whole meadow, him and the two, three others, the big uh, cattlemen, when they started uh, c cutting the uh, allotments, he told my folks, you take this whole meadow, put yourself and your wife and your kids all along this creek here. You'll get plenty of hay for your stock. So they did. They, they took, my father and my mother took a good land along the, along the creek, and my brother, and my sister, they all joined one another all the way down. And they said, and all, all people said, well, we got all this meadow here, or are we going to get our wood? So my oldest brother, they put him way on the, on the hillside where there's some timber. Well, we'll get our wood from, from them, from, from his allotment. All right, everything was okay. Now, my brother got married. He fenced up his place, and he started living at his place, and still no place to get wood. They never thought of the children who were going to grow up and get married and, and all that. They thought it was going to be all together all the time, so they can get wood from there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they were, they were, they didn't know much at that time, so. Yeah, I, I, that's one thing I was about, I was wondering about was, you know, if if it used to be where the Kootenays, you know, would share and share alike, and yeah, um, how come they didn't all just pick out allotments that attached on to each other? Yeah, so there was they one did. big Kootenay area, mm -hmm. and it sounds like your family did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or tried to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now they they started selling their land. Mm -hmm. And the white people owns all that meadow now, all along the little bit road. A lot of people sold their allotments soon after they got them, isn't that yeah. true? Yeah. Why was that? Because they want the money. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let her tell you about that, all those people that sold their land. And well, that's true. They just yeah. wanted money. 
It's all. So. The world is supposed to sell their land and they work it so they get patent and fee. So they sold it that way. And some of them found out all that that guy sold his land. He went through this and he sold his land. So a lot of them started doing that. And pretty soon they started selling the whole reservation. But they, they shut that down. They closed it on the Indians. I can't say what year, how many years after that. The superintendent knew that the lands were really going just fast. And they, they close them out. They don't want them to continue selling out. And that affected into a law too, and then they didn't for a long, long time. And one day, that they knew that they could get a patent in fee. And that strong, that if they catch hold of that, that one day, if they have a buyer, they have to just go and say, I've got the patent. Well, we'll go to town tomorrow to the bank, courthouse, wherever, and I'll buy it from you. And uh, in the, oh, the first time, some of them, they would just go to the superintendent's office and do the selling there. And then the second time they'd get patents and before they could sell their allotments. Then it continued again. Never did stop and stop for good, it continued some. That's how company all these Indian allotments are sold. Uh, throughout here where I mentioned I was my second stop after I mentioned where I was born and raised on kind of a top of a bench across there. Then when I got older, I moved down. When I got married and I started having children, I lived right across the street, that good land there. I was one of them that sold that land. And I had a reason for doing it. I wanted to educate my kids and therefore they needed money. So I did that for that reason. And the rest of them started to. But know. that 1920 allotment, most of them, the, the tribe bought us out. to so turn back into a tribal land. Yeah. Like my allotment, I sold it for 1500. That went and back to the acre. tribe, just like I still own it. Ten cents an acre when they started buying us, us against our lawn. Where was that allotment? Mine is above Elmo, just on the Elmo hillside way up there. South side of Elmo. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's where mine was, and it was 160. Mm -hmm. And they bought it back from me for $1,600, 160 acres. And I, I suppose he got twelve hundred dollars. He only had twelve. I mean, uh, hundred and twenty acres. Where was where was your land? Where was your land? Up in uh, Narada. Oh. Other side of the Above where he quick, mentioned the, the middle, hill. the good land. And he's that his, was just a on the side hill to us. Wasteland. I don't even own the timber. Nothing. It was rocky up there that I'd never use, make use of it. Hill rocks. No. Why, why did you end up getting that piece for your allotment? That was 1920 allotments when they started giving the, the kids their allotment. Yeah. Yeah. But didn't you get to choose where your allotment? No. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they did. My folks put me up there in that <laughs> worthless land. Well, they couldn't help it. All the old allotments were all taken, and uh, white people started taking the rest, the second best, and then the, us, they had to put us on, up on the hill. Mm -hmm. That explains a lot. I had 
um, a question. You told a story when I visited with you a couple of weeks ago about Big Knife and Pascal and where they locked the guy up in that boat down in Polson. Yeah. That whole story and the whites coming in and threatening Big Knife, Enius Big Knife. Mm -hmm. could, could you tell that story? Yeah, well, I really don't know at all, but this is what I hear. My grandmother was telling me that uh, the days this uh, Pasco was a roughneck. <laughs> he went traveling around, and I guess he did something bad over here. They called this place Angel Hill. The road goes from here, and it goes um, Round uh, Lookout Pass, no, Lookout. Well, yeah, they call it Lookout Pass, I guess. The they road call goes, it Flathead Lookout. Yeah, Flathead Lookout, I would say. Right around in there, that's where he did that thing. He took a man's life. And then when they finally found out that happened and he come home over here at the village, the village was still here and all over. And Chief Big Knife already built his house up in his own allotment up there. And then there were some teepees around that outside of this village. There was so many goodness at one time. And they've been wanting to pick him up because they know he did wrong. And at times he'd go back close to the people and Chief Big Knife told him, you want it to be that way. So you also must give yourself up. Are you going to get us in trouble? We might start having war right here among the army guys and us. There was armies in Kalispell already. And he kept running away and running away. So finally, this one time, they came, and they wanted that man. And they were still all over here, all over. So early in the morning, they got there, and they met. And Chief Big Knife told him, I'm trying my best, but I cannot do it. He comes around when he's hungry, but he skips again, he goes. And I don't know how we can ever catch him. It's not my work. I've been telling him he better give himself up in order we could all live in peace. And he won't do it, so. The second time they came again, and that's when they finally took the chief and they took him to Polson. And there was a, a boat there they used to. Is that that Klondak? Yeah. They used to call that big boat Klondak. It was a passenger boat. It would leave Pauls and go clear to Summers. And you can get in that like a bus. Yeah, it starts from uh, Demersible and comes out. Each bay, there is a dock, goes way out, like this Dayton here, goes way out. Alamo goes way out and big art. You should stop in each bay to pick up passengers, unload the, the and and this this here about this Angel Hill, they got the white people, they got it all mixed up. And that's where that man was killed. This Pascal killed this man for his money. He was on his way to Kalispell to put up a, a bank. He had a last lot of money with him. So this old guy, he wasn't old, he was a young guy, so he knew about it. He caught up with him and wrote with him. That's why he killed him for the money. And. Uh, when the white people found out, and this is something funny, uh, they didn't, they didn't, maybe they didn't, didn't ask just where it happened, where that uh, skeleton was and things like that. So they changed that Angel Hill 
from there to that uh, planet lookout. There was an old wagon road from uh, from uh, Rollins, where they built in that new road, where you kind of circle around this uh, Rollins door, and that that dirt road goes straight on up to that hill, and it goes right over. And on the other side was kind of steep. Whichever way you travel, when you travel going, going the other way, they use ropes to go down. It was steep. And when they come up from the other way, they put extra team on the, on the wagon to come up. It was so darn steep. Yeah. That's where it happened. That's where that Mr. Angel was killed. And white people didn't know that something funny because they were going to pick this guy up. and they, Nowadays, they want to know just where it happened and, and everything like that before, before they want to pick him up. No evidence, nothing. Now they changed that Angel Hill way over there. This is the Angel Hill right here, just going over from Rollins, going over. This is well finished. You got this watcher on you. Why they took big knife? Well, do you, do you want to go on with that then? Where they came yeah. after the camp? Well, yeah, they took him. I said, and then they left him in that boat. When and they uh, first came after that guy at Pasco, they were, they were camping up here. You could see that place, other side of Elf's house there, that kind of a bench up there. That's where they were big camp there. They were having Sundays when those white people came. And the chief told his, that was his nephew, told him, I'll give you a, a rifle, ammunition, you go down there and there's a great big rock there. It's got a crack in it, big enough for man to be to be sitting in there. He says, you go down there. When, when they come, you better kill as many as you can before they get you. So this man didn't want to. When they were coming, white people were coming, and there was uh, the, the army, uh, they were marching, they were walking, and these uh, people from uh, around Summers and all over there, they were all horseback. When they came and they were getting ready to, for war, these Indians here, and one of them, just when they were getting there where that man's supposed to be, they were coming and, and uh, this one guy was getting ready, took his clothes off, just his rich cloth, and paint, his, paint himself, and put on the shawl, and put a pin on here, and, and he jumped on his horse. They say the old timers never used, they never used to use that kind of horse when they go to war. There's a certain horse they, they pick out for that purpose. But this guy jumped on his best horse, and that that horse ran away with him, took off. He couldn't stop him, and he took right that horse took right off where the soldiers was coming, and they all turned and started running. This guy was right behind because he couldn't stop his horse, and they stopped at uh, the Dayton little town there. Just one man pushed the whole work back. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Actually, one horse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah on the call of that crazy horse. <laughs> well, well, they were getting near that second time, and they had two men. There's a name for them in Indian. They can understand a little bit Kootenai. 
they were among those white people in the army guys. And they spoke from way far there. They said that we don't want to have war with you, Kootenays. We come and uh, all we want is uh, we're going to take the chief down there and wait. And in the meantime, you people try to get this Pascal right now. Yeah, those people, the, the big shots, Ron Summers. Now and change one of them, it back over one to One of them him. was uh, living in the, in the Eureka. You finish the, this, that screen goes back and forth. You don't know what's going on. Now you finish it, then I won't say nothing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like in Indian, they had an Indian name of them too. Big shots, white people. They talk. They both talk Kootenai. Mm -mm. That's the end. So you can go for about another minute. Yeah. The mm -hmm. the other one was named uh, in Kootenai. They call him Tolakalasukwen. That means uh, Kootenai chief. And his brother's name was uh, they 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 named him. Uh, it starts Nasukwin, that's a boy chief. And uh, they're the ones that gather the people over there to come and make war with, with the Kootenays. And they, they both talk Kootenay.